related only to Turkish, but maybe I'll make up for what he skipped. I'll talk about one of the novels that he connects with the Bengali novels and Mexican novels. Um, and this novel is called Tutunamayanlar, which we can translate as The Disconnected. Um, it was published in 1972. Um, it's regarded as the novel that transformed this uh, modern Turkish literature at the time because of its revolutionary form. Um, and not only form, but also striking content and use of language, uh, which was a uh, first time for the time. Um, uh, I'll talk about more about its narrative features and its impact on Turkish literature later. Uh, but uh, uh, when it first appeared in the 1970s, uh, it was ignored uh, because it was so different. And it took at least 10 years with the second publication of the novel uh, 12 years later that uh, critics, uh, scholars begin to, begin to talk about it. Um, uh, so one of the literary critics in Turkey, Ömer Madre, thinks that Turkish inter intelligentsia, to which the writer all the time belonged to, uh, chose to ignore the novel because the, the novel criticized this class. Uh, um, and ignoring it was one of the uh, ways that they dealt with it. Um, another critic, Enis Potter, um, claims that the literary circles at the time uh, functioned on the principle of seniority. All the time he was an outsider as a professor of engineering from a technical university, was not accepted as a, as a writer, so uh, they uh, they tolerated it, but they were angry that uh, someone outside the literary circles uh, uh, produced such a novel criticizing the intelligentsia. And, and Yildiz Dejevit, a Ozatai scholar, claims that the conventions of the Turkish novel at the time in the 70s were still uh, based on re uh, realism, so it is. Um, uh, Tutunamayanlar was an exception to this, and uh, so that affected how it was perceived. Nurdan um, Yurbilek, um, an important Turkish uh, literary critic, uh, claims that the, re uh, the reason that the reception of Tutunamayanlar changed in the 80s is also related to uh, many uh, aspects of Turkish life in the 80s and she talks about political, social and cultural transformation of Turkey in the 80s. And, um, maybe I shouldn't talk about all of this if I want to cover but I'll try to go over it quickly. Uh, she claims that what had until then been, been repressed, uh, robbed of the possibilities of cultural expression and return in some ways in the uh, 1980s um, and but she says that uh, the repress was never truly repressed or returned as such and it was a transformed and transforming process and, and in for literature she claims that it was on, on the outlook for something autonomous something different and and it was at this time under the pressure of the market uh, and the history was, uh, had an increasing interest in the past um, but at the same time there was emerging a sense of pop history at the time. So all of these conditions affected how Tutuna Myanmar was uh, received in the 80s. Um, Bernard Moran thinks that and shows that how uh, this novel is very closely related to Western literature. Uh, for example, um, it brings the modernist and postmodernist uh, qualities to Turkish literature for the first time, uh, but it also has uh, certain commonalities with uh, previous works. Um, Post-literary scholars shows how this novel is related to 
uh, Western texts, for example, the Bible, Don Quixote, um, Hamlet, a portrait of the artist, uh, Ulysses, uh, as well as Metamorphosis and the Trial. Um, uh, there is also a, a, a influence of Nabokov on Otai and on this novel. Um, but um, so it, you you can see that it's uh, the, behind the work there is a group of writers we can talk as modernists and postmodernists at the same time. Um, but we c we shouldn't just say that the novel is about all these Western texts uh, because the content is also originally and uniquely Turkish. Uh, so it brings about it blends this cultural heritage with the local heritage, and the result is the uh, original work. It, it's not available in English. Um, it's it's a very difficult text to trans uh, to translate. So so far, it has been translated into Dutch and uh, German, which are both of them are very recent. Uh, and it's not available in English yet. Um, Bernard Moran says that this novel is one of the first examples of uh, the problems of the individuals as opposed to the previous generations of social injustices. Uh, and one important thing about this novel is that it's also a, a revolt against bourgeois mentality. Um, as I said, the title can be translated as the disconnected. Um, so it's the revolt against the uh, common mindset, which can be translated as, as the connected. So it's the uh, revolt of the disconnected against the connected slash bourgeois. Um, The connected are those who unquestioningly embrace the values of bourgeois existence. Uh, they find themselves and they lead identical lives with which they have no problems. Whereas the disconnected are the ones who revolt against this, do not abide by the standards. Um, there are two characters, Selim and Turgut. Selim is, is naturally a disconnected, whereas Turgut learns how to be through the traces that Selim leaves behind. Um, and we, we witness Turgut's awakening to banality and conformity that his previous life uh, was based on. Um, I'll, I'll skip some of these parts, you will have the presentation. Um, uh, what is the... Uh, revolutionary or uh, important about this novel is that it's not just criticizing one thing but it's like a, a criticism of at all fronts for example uh, it criticized turkey's official history and national ideology uh, it's it plays with kafkaesque and uh, uh, narratives of bureaucracy it's against it's a criticism of uh, the literary practices in Turkey at the time. Um, uh, it's also a criticism of bourgeois art, uh, and especially how literature was perceived at the time. Um, it brings uh, discontent with civilization, but it also criticizes literary analysis. So it's, it's a little bit ironic that uh, I'm uh, here talking about a literary criticism uh, of the novel. Um, uh, the novel starts with two fictional prefaces, but they contradict one another. And they uh, claim the opposite. So even the beginning of the novel undermines its own claims. Uh, if one says that these are based on uh, the text is based on real events, the other says that that's not possible because that will be the, against the spirit of our nation, our characters. Um, so if the first preface is, uses the all, fam all too familiar um, tactics of prefaces, the second one undermines it. So even at the beginning, before the text actually starts, 
the reader doesn't know where to stand, uh, whether it's a serious novel, whether it should be taken uh, as, an, as a completely ironic text. Um, it does another thing, it brings attention to the textuality of the text. So constantly talking about these uh, prefaces and different letters, uh, it immediately begins to talk about the textual nature of this uh, narrative uh, and while at the same time mocking the conventions of realistic novel. So uh, we, can't, we can say that uh, it starts with, the, uh, uh, with undermining the conventions of realistic novel. Um, Talking about textuality, everything in the text is about another text. The, the events start because a letter arrives. Um, and the content of the letter is not fully revealed, we don't know, but we know that what is written in it is very important for the second character, Turgut, and it changes his life completely. First of all, he learns about the suicide of his uh, former best friend, and it also brings him to re-evaluate his life and his choices and he starts on a new journey. Um, in the beginning it's difficult to decide and make these big changes, but uh, at the same time all the other texts, memories of these texts and conversations uh, uh, makes him follow uh, this decision. Um, so all of these different texts um, uh, uh, make up the text of the novel. So it's the text made of many different uh, texts. Um, for example, uh, it, the text itself is a physical and psychological journey. Uh, the uh, Turgut, the second character, begins on a journey traveling through trains, uh, buying books, uh, reading through um, uh, diaries, uh, himself writing um, uh, and talking about the text he has read. It's a, it's a series of uh, many texts. Uh, so what is, uh, what is important about this novel is that it's inventive narrative for the time it has been published and I think uh, we can still say it for today as well. It's still a, a, a very inventive text for uh, for Turkish literature. Um, one important discussion about this text is whether it's modernist or postmodernist, and it, it's it mirrors uh, some of the debates in literary criticism as well whether there's a difference between modernism and postmodernism. And I talk about some of the at least two of the critics who talk about modernism versus postmodernism. Uh, one of them is Frederick Jameson and the other one is Yotard. Uh, Yotard. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not good with French pronunciation. Um, so some critics say that, uh, uh, for example, Frederick Jameson, there is, a, uh, there is a difference between what modernism is and postmodernism is and we can discern it, we can explain it, Whereas some other critics uh, claim that uh, postmodernism is already included in uh, modernism. There isn't a distinction that we can talk about. Uh, Frederick Jameson is, the, is from the first group. He approaches the discussion from a sociological framework and he says that uh, even though they can share certain uh, uh, commonalities, there is still a difference between them because of the changes in the production and the perception of artistic work in our, uh, in our modern period. And he calls this stage the, the stage of late capitalism. Uh, so for him, contemporary art inescapably postmodern, postmodern and it is different from uh, modernist novels, modernist art, because it's produced in, this, uh, in late capitalism and aesthetic production has become an integral part of commodity production. So um, we can't talk about art without the late stage of commodity production. Um, and he uses certain markers for postmodernism. For example, he says a need that, that 
adaptiveness, a consequent weakening of historicity, a schizophrenic structure, all of which are cl uh, closely related to a new whole technology and a new economic world system. Um, as I said, there's also a second group which doesn't uh, see a clear distinction between modernism and postmodernism. Um, for them, postmodernism is intrinsic to modernism, and instead of all these negative connotations uh, with our contemporary times, they see a set of uh, freedom and liberties that artists can use to the advantage of art, uh, not necessarily seen as, as restrictive, uh, inhibiting, but actually as a, as a process that liberates an art and artists. Okay. Okay. Um, um, with Tutunama Yanmar, uh, there is also a discussion whether it's a modernist or po uh, postmodern novel. Um, there are certain uh, traits textual traits in the novel that we can call as uh, postmodernist. For example, the text is governed by anarchy, absence, deconstruction, irony, uncertainty, there are no answers, uh, there, are, there aren't any certainties. All of this we can, uh, we can associate with postmodernism. Uh, uh, there isn't much hierarchy, presence, uh, metaphysics, certainty that we can talk about in the novel. There is also a uh, non-meta discourse according to which all the other parts is uh, evaluated or governed. Um, it's difficult to talk about a hierarchy in, in the novel. Uh, it's almost like all the parts are, are horizontally put uh, next to one another as opposed to in a vertical fashion that will make a hierarchical structure uh, possible. Um, even the relation between Turgut and Selim is not, uh, is not of a hierarchical nature. Um, so we can say that all of these qualities, dominance of absence or presence, um, uh, uh, higher, uh, anarchy, uh, irony, uncertainty makes it a, a postmodernist novel. Um, I'll talk about some of these things later, so I'll move on. Um, but before uh, uh, making a judgment based on these qualities, we should be careful about making such clear distinction because uh, creating such list is basically a descriptive level and leaving aside as, uh, as much as covers. Uh, so it's, uh, if it's based on a certain selection, and uh, if we are to go along this line, then we can say it's a postmodernist novel. But there are other things that if we, uh, if we take into consideration, that uh, it would contradict this type of uh, list of postmodern qualities. Um, So I'll show how it also contains certain uh, modernist qualities. Um, uh, Bernard Moran, whom I mentioned briefly, um, says that the novel is postmodern and modernist at the same time. Um, it's connected to modernism because of the deep impact of Joyce on a type, uh, but it's also connected to postmodernism through the influence of Nabokov. Um, Yildiz Ejeritz uh, says that the problematization of writer and writing and countless other references to earlier literary texts, the novel is one of the first examples of metafiction in Turkish novel and she sees it as a postmodern novel. And, and Jale Parlam uh, approaches the novel through a thematic um, way and says that um, the passage from Selim's depression to Turgut's schizophrenia in the novel is, can be taken as a symbol of passage from modernism to postmodernism in literature in a wider sense. Um, uh, the textual wealth of the novel is one of the things that we can uh, talk about. Uh, so there are many types of, there are two different types of prefaces. 
there are letters, one of the letters uh, is to Jesus Christ and there are encyclopedic entries, for example, disconnected erectus, the, the disconnected is described as an animal type and it's in the encyclopedia of weird creatures and there is a clinical diary, there are songs uh, that are uh, that imitate certain types of narratives but there are also commentary and literary criticism on the songs and lecture notes, biographies, uh, imitation of uh, religious text, all of them take place within uh, within the novel. Um, um, pastiche is another important part of the novel. It uh, imitates previous works of art uh, with a uh, touch of irony. Um, for example, one of them, uh, Too Good's Ironic Satire of Bureaucracy, uh, is is a uh, is a comment on the uh, ten commandments of the holy book. Uh, another is the is the adaptation of the first hearing of jo just Joseph K in the trial by Kafka uh, happens to Turgut. Um, so all these details uh, bring this novel uh, close to postmodernist art. Um, but as I said, there are also things that make it a modernist novel. For example, um, uh, one thing that uh, one thing uh, critics talk about is that it took 10, 12 years for this novel to be uh, acknowledged, recognized by Turkish literary critics. Uh, is that when it appeared, the conventions were based on realist, realist novels, so it wasn't ready for this kind of uh, uh, novel. But at the same time, we can also talk about differences between what happened in, in the West in terms of uh, time and in Turkey. So we can say that they weren't on the same historical uh, time when Tutunameyanlar appeared. Um, um, for example, Jameson associated a postmodern novel with depthlessness, weakening of historicity, elimination of alienation, lack of lack, fragmentation of subjectivity. We can say that all these things we can find in Tutunamayana. So it's uh, Tutunamayana uh, uh, contains these markers of postmodernity. Uh, but at the same time, there are other things. Alienation and lack are the most obvious markers of the narrative, uh, and it gives uh, the sense of that to the novel. Is it already 23 minutes? Is it true? Okay, I'll, I'll try to move very quickly. But most importantly, uh, in this novel, as opposed to the postmodern novels, uh, there is the tension of between, between life and art. Uh, which makes it closer to the modernist novel uh, rather than the postmodern novel. Um, uh, so primacy of art over life is emphasized again and again. Um, so all of these, we can say that it's uh, equally tied to modernism and postmodernism at the same time. It's, uh, if content is close to one type of uh, literary moment, uh, technical aspects make it close to the other. Um, Johnny Parlo talks about um, how Don Quixote uh, underscored two things, uh, reality and illusion, and sanity and madness, and all the pre uh, subsequent novels continued along these lines. Uh, Tutunamayana is more about sanity and madness, and shows that uh, the relation between um, uh, depression and schizophrenia and modernism and postmodernism. I'll skip over that. Um, uh, one thing that Ian was going to talk about but had to skip over was the uh, Jesus Christ is an important figure for this text. And the reason that Christ is the archetype uh, the, uh, Jesus appears as an important figure in the text, and the reason for this is that is he is the archetype of all the disconnected. 
Um, so Selim and Turgut are connected to Jesus Christ uh, more than any other cultural figures in Turkey. And uh, that was also something unexpected for the readership in Turkey. Um, there is a figure of uh, a character called Ulrich, which makes it connect to Shakespeare's text. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'll try to cover some of it. And there is an inevitable sense of belatedness in the text, which is also related to Turkish literary and cultural scene, how Turkish modernization is belated to, uh, uh, in terms of European modernity. And Jason also explains uh, postmodernism through schizophrenia, how in schizophrenia uh, there is a there is a disconnection between signifiers, and it's possible to explain it uh, uh, how the novel is related to these um, uh, uh, signifiers without any connection, and. But at the same time, the novel is not a, a series of joy, joyous uh, um, moments, but it's, uh, it's permeated with a sense of alienation, and, as, uh, and in this sense, it also uh, reveals a deep sense of anxiety, which we can connect with modernism. Um, 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 I'll see if there's anything I should say. And maybe lastly I can talk about how it's related to the context of Turkey as a, a maybe underdeveloped or developing uh, country, how the arts in, in contexts like Turkey's uh, bring this uh, complicated relation to arts, uh, which can also be found in uh, Tutumanayana. Um, I'll, I'll leave the <coughs> text uh, Aslan, so you can you can go over on your own. I'm I'm way over my time. <laughs> Thanks.